The practical answer is guidance. You know, you have to come back to, to this inner sense of guidance that you intuitively know the answer already, but how willing am I to tap into that answer and to just follow that? And instead of trying to judge the forms and try to say, well, here's where I draw the line, like in our families when we grew up, you know, there's a certain amount of talk, but once it got into complaining and whining, it was shut up, and then a warning, and then, you know, I'll give you something to really cry about <laughs> if you keep crying. <laughs> you know, there was almost like a system of, of threats, and then finally, okay, here's some consequences and actions. And the question was, how far do you go before you have to start to say, oh, we need some real consequences to come in here, and it's, it still comes back to guidance. And to me, that's the most practical thing that you could leave with, if you feel a sense of, of intuitive connection, that there's something within you, that's it. You, you just said exactly that, 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 until you find that in yourself, until you actually realize that that is the only way. You can say that a million times, you can, you can write books about it, you can make posters about it, you can mail it to, on postcards to every single person in the world, but until you find it in yourself, you, you're not going to get it. Yeah. You. Yeah. That's it. And, and it's, as long as it still seems to be personal in any way, that's not it. In other words, you were just using the, you say, well, you and the messengers, you know, you live off of the donations, and so you don't seem to be subject to a lot of the things, or when Gordon left, you know, London and went off and sailed the Mediterranean and, and is now living on the land in harmony, you may not be dealing with governments and, you know, all those kind of things, but that's by choice. Uh, and for me, when people come sometimes and say, well, for you it's great. Uh, Great, happy to hear. You're flowing around, living off of donations and da 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 No, that's just how it looks in the world. Uh, I don't consider that my life is supported by anybody. I really don't. I mean, I just see it's the Holy Spirit using the symbols. You know, it, as long as I would see it kind of in a, in a personal way, as if uh, I was personally receiving donations, you know, and that my life was different or special in some way because I was getting it done. I tell everybody that actually everyone, everyone's living in divine providence. Truly. We don't have to draw a line and say, who's not living in divine providence? You can believe that you're working for a living. You can believe if you want to that you're earning money and that you're getting paid and you've got a bank account and a salary, and you can believe in reciprocity if you choose, but actually in the quantum field there is no such thing as reciprocity. You're not doing a good or a service in exchange for your livelihood. The quantum field is life, and nothing of these organisms or these constructs called human beings going around, I don't care if it's democracy, capitalism, socialism, Ismism, <laughs> mysticism, uh, any kind of ism, ism you want to put with it. The quantum field is really all that's happening. And so to me, I think it's great. I, I experience that everyone is in divine providence. And it's really beautiful. And you can choose to join me. I hope someday you <laughs> join us. And the world will live as one. Because the world does live as one. Not will, but it actually does live as one. So, so for me, that's what's practical about this, is to how willing am I to let go of my constructs. Take somebody like Jesus, for example. Jesus went by the name of Jesus of Nazareth. He didn't change his name to Clyde or Fred. He didn't change his name five, six times. He just took the name that was given him by Joseph and Mary, Jesus. Uh, when he talked about parables, he said there was a man who had two sons. Let's take the prodigal son parable, for example. The quantum field is the quantum field. If Jesus wanted to, to be just stay metaphysically correct with words and symbols, he could have just come and just said, God is. You know, that would have been a pretty good uh, parable. Sit down, everybody gather around me. 
Uh, come on, you over under the vines, the olive vines there, you know, come on out, come here. I've got a parable. God is. Did you get it? Okay, hope you got it. If you got it, great. If not, don't go home and think about it. It's just a fact, God is. These are symbols. They don't have anything to do with the quantum field, but these are symbols and parables. The, the idea of David or messengers or this devotional, I mean, I was asked before I came here, you know, what are you going to do to organize this devotional? I said, I'm not going to or organize it. I have no interest in organizing anything. There are logistics, you know, that seem to be part of the human condition and those things, the, really the desire is, let those be taken care of in the, in the simplest way possible, so we can really focus on the God is. So we can really get into the, the divine field, you know, the quantum field. That's all my desire is, is, is to just express that. These things are parables, you know, if people have done that with Jesus, they say, well, you know, why twelve? What's the big deal with twelve? And then they say, and why all men? Would have, you know, would have been a little more uh, correct if you're supposed to be teaching the equality of symbols. Why not pick six, six women and have six men? And why Aramaic? You know, why not uh, another language? You know, you you can nitpick. The ego can nitpick all at once, but the more you nitpick, the more you simply avoid the central question, it, why am I still trying to hold an identity apart from the quantum field? That's really the question. That's what's going on here. I don't mind the questions. I, I did a one-on-one -on -one with you and you wanted to ask all kinds of specific questions about David, but the David figure is really insignificant. And so are all the other specifics about messengers and this and this. But these are stepping stone ideas. You know, the, the Course and all spiritualities that are helpful will say, you need a ladder to step back. You know, you're too frightened of the quantum field. You're too frightened of love to, to just open to it instantaneously. You need symbols and steps. So, when I talk about the parable of David, all I'm doing is I'm being disclosing, and I'm just using parables, much like Buddha, Jesus, Ramana Maharshi, and on and on, Gangaji. These are all parables. Last night, I, I went into great detail, I don't think you were here, but, but actually I went into great detail about seeing everything in the world as just symbols. 